Hi, I'm Eric Simons. Um, that that is me. Uh, I'm one of the co-creators of Stack Blitz, which is uh, what we're going to be showing off. I had no idea I was going to be talking here tonight, by the way. I just <laughs> I'm not joking. It was well. like literally an hour and a half. I'd say with Rob. So this is, uh, yeah. So this is this is I'm, yeah. This is uh, this should be interesting, one way or the other. So. Um, and we had no idea he would be here until about three <laughs> thirty. Yes. So. But I'm glad to be here. Uh, I actually we we were talking at NGConf about. Um, you know, the next time I was in Seattle, I let them know, and I, I let them know just in the nick of time, I guess. So, um, cool. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna show off the GitHub thing first, yeah. right? Okay, cool. So, um, who, who here has like heard of Stackblitz and or used the thing? Okay, so a lot of you who haven't, um, like here. Okay, yep. yeah, perfect. Um, okay, so basically, Stackblitz is an online IDE uh, for Angular and it supports other stuff like React and whatever have you. Um, but basically the idea is if you go to like stackblitz.com, uh, in one click you can get an environment in less than three seconds that's live. Um, and do you have it pulled up? I'm just, just going to zoom in a little. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so basically it's like super fast. It's like the fastest environment for building applications. And so it's great for like prototyping. If you've gone to the Angular docs in the past couple months uh, and clicked on like run live example, that's running on our stuff. So you may have actually used it kind of without realizing it. Um, but uh, yeah, so it comes out of the box with hot reloading. It's powered by VS Code, so it has like IntelliSense and whatnot. Um, so uh, yeah, so yeah, so as an example, we mentioned before we have this community project, Angular Seattle. Uh, it seems like it's named Agora. Uh, this is created by Mike. Uh, so let's spy on what Mike is doing. So you can see this project is on GitHub. So. <clears throat> So yeah, any stack, any GitHub project uh, that's an Angular CLI project, you can just put stackblitz.com in front of the URL uh, with one A though. We'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then if, when you hit enter, it will automatically import that repo. And uh, like I said, it's super fast. We actually wrote our own npm client, so this thing's actually installing dependencies on the fly. Um, hopefully this thing works. How big is this app? It's a big. Oh, it's app. huge. Okay, all right. So that that might explain this, but um, on like other sized apps, it'll usually boot in under five seconds or so. Um, but uh, yeah, so man, that thing's taking a while. It's a network that's slow. Oh, uh, gotcha. That makes sense. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so it's big. But basically, the idea is you can just put you know st uh, stacklist.com in front of any GitHub URL, automatically imports it. Uh, installs dependencies on demand. Um, and so this is kind of like the, how we actually got started on the project is we wanted to see if we could actually port your local tool chain to run entirely in your browser, right? So this is actually all being done inside of the browser. Like it's actually, we wrote our own NPM client that runs natively in the browser. It actually runs five times faster than NPM and Yarn. Um, so how can you run five times faster? Well, that's what we all that, should ask. That, <laughs> that's like that's like a whole other talk. Yeah, like, um, I mean, <laughs> we all know it's slow on a desktop. I'll, I'll give you the I, browser <laughs> is faster than a desktop. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'll give you the TLDR. Basically, it's like really smart. So uh, essentially, <laughs> that's like, if, you gotta, if you have to boil it down to something, it's it's really smart. It only downloads the stuff your application actually needs, right? So it actually traces out all of the files and all of your npm packages on the fly. Um, and downloads them and runs them uh, in the browser. And this is actually a progressive web app. So you can actually go offline with this. We're on a live stream, so I, we, we probably shouldn't do that. But if you go offline, you can keep on developing, hit refresh, because we're actually running a dev server inside of the service worker in that preview, if you're seeing on the right, right? So um, you're saying it's a PWA? It is a PWA. So it's a PWA that lets you build PWA. So it's like Inception or something. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's the gist of what Stackblitz is. Um, so it's really cool for being able to prototype or for learning or whatever have you. Um, is there any, uh, uh, do you want okay. to show anything else before we dive into the thing we announced at NGConf or? Uh? No, let's just go and power up some code here. Because Oleg told me today that we need to build <laughs> something. <laughs> so here, I'm starting up a new Angular project. Let's see if we could increase So that's how fast it normally goes. So you see like we have a live dev environment here. <laughs> Um, it's got high reloading everything. So let's go in and take a look here. We have hello Angular 6. So let's update that <coughs> to Seattle. You can see it, well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
I'm gonna say that's faster than uh, the CLI. It is. It is, and that's because it's entirely in memory. <laughs> Well, IV is going to work in this thing just fine too. Yeah, That's going to be it's, <laughs> it's hard to be. It's it's. I think it's it, it's got to be the fastest dev environment because it's all being done in memory. Because the problem with local is that you have to interface with that fast. You have to. There's a whole bunch of hops before you actually when you hit save that chain to actually get it into your browser um, adds a lot on top. And so since we're we're we have a virtual file system running inside the browser, so you're not actually waiting to actually write to a file system when you're making these edits, so, right? While Mike, so, Mike makes what? some code changes, maybe you can talk about the toolbar and the kind of the different terms. First of all, what's your favorite feature? What should we build here? Something fun, something cool. What did he talk about? PWA. <laughs> so it should, work, it should work on mobile? Of course, it should work on mobile, it should work offline. <laughs> well, okay. well, yeah, Example. okay, all right. Um, Okay, so why don't we, yeah, why don't we, uh, so what's cool about Stacklist, by the way, you'll see he's changing the title of this thing over here. So every Stacklist uh, project actually, it's kind of like Heroku um, or any of these other kind of deployment things. Whatever you name the project, you get a corresponding URL. So you can see that in the URL bar over there. That is the unique URL of this project. And so uh, one of the things we announced at, at GCOMP uh, was this new feature called Teleport. I would suggest everyone who has mobile <laughs> device navigate to this link, please. So yeah, go to go to that URL. Go to this link, please. <laughs> there, is a, there is something cool stuff. <laughs> really recommend. It. So so what what it allows you to do is you can hot reload and debug across all of your devices, right? Um, so and that all you have to do is just open <laughs> that link right there, and as people start opening up their phones and going to that link, um, you'll see down here we have this cool little integrated version of Chrome DevTools. So you go ahead and just like pop that open. And you can see it's showing how many devices are connected over the air right now. Somebody could connect the phone to Tacoma. Tacoma, Tacoma, Tacoma. So let me go to this on my phone too. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie Lake. We have Bonnie Lake here in house. So let, let me uh, see. If, let's see if we can connect to my iPhone once I get this going. Um, stack blitz. So one of the cool things is that um, so actually go ahead and do like a hot reload, uh, like change the name or something, so everyone can kind of see that. From uh, maybe should I just like yeah. type on uh, over there, change the name of it, maybe something like that. So if everyone who has their phone out when he makes this edit, you should see it. Otherwise, I have a bug to investigate when I go home tonight. <laughs> wow! Everyone get it? Wow! Oh. There I you go. <laughs> okay, sixteen people right now. Eighteen. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep collecting, please, guys. Right, so why, why don't you find my iPhone in that that drop down? So that's so you can do hot reloads, but you can also debug. Uh, so maybe try. There's a couple of them. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to find me. <laughs> so um, no, probably. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, try try like that guy. <laughs> like, try, any of them. try any of them for that matter. But it's really right, cool. So you can actually remote into the any of these devices' consoles, right? So just pick one at random and throw an alert on someone's screen. If you get the alert, uh, raise your hand. So we're actually remotely executing code on your phone. So that's uh, definitely. Yeah, we like living life on the edge. You might have to escape that guy. Have to work. Or, or switch to a double there you go. All right, so who's going to get this? Oh, I got it! Okay. <laughs> and I accidentally locked my phone while I was lifting it. Right. So you can see, I, I just got the alert that he typed in, right? So if you actually not do a prompt on this, so prompt me for what my name is. So this is cool. So you can see the return value of an alert is undefined. It's not returning anything. But with the prompt, uh, the return value is actually the string that you enter. And so I got that prompt on my phone here. As you can see, I'm going to type back in. And I'm just going to say, hello, back. I'm going to hit OK, and then boom. Hello. You can see the return value from my phone, right? So pretty cool. So it makes it like, this is one of the things that's really tough about progressive web apps is targeting both desktop and mobile. This makes it a total dream because you can quickly iterate on your features, and you can quickly debug any errors that happen pop up in this console. Um, so yeah, so that's teleport in a nutshell. And so why don't you take it away, and let's, let's, let's build an app together. Let's yeah? add some features. Let's have fun. Oleg, what do you want to add? <clears throat> Of course, camera. Or camera. Okay. Of course. You have to use so device. if you see to the left here, uh, instead of using like a CLI, you can actually go out and just create your own component right there, or just right click on it. My component. Camera. So create a folder with CSS, HTML, and the TS file. Perfect. So let's try to use this one. Uh,
camera works, you should all see camera works. Everybody on their phone? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so if we have camera, we need a video element, right, to do something fun? Yep, we need a video element in there. And I would like to see a face of my clients. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we're going to name this one Eric since he's here too. <laughs> <laughs> so we need a variable, right, to be able to use this element later on. So let's go over to our TypeScript file. A little bit more space here. And let's create a view child. And the name was Eric. And it's really a video. I need to import that. So here's the question: Why can't I right-click and get view child now to show up? Uh, right-clicking. Oh, you mean like auto import? Yes. Because I haven't built that yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do here? Go I know, I know. I, my flight's in like an hour, so I'm getting back to it. I hope it's a long flight so you can implement it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I've added. Um, so we have a navigator here, right? So now we need to connect the camera somehow on your phone or on our desktop to this element. So navigator, media devices, get use media. And what we're interested here in is the video. And you can see here, it's already asked me. Oh, yeah. I got Do mine. I want to use the camera? Hello? Yep. So now I have a little green dot here that's oh, spying that's on me. Yep. I have access to my camera now. <laughs> and you can remote execute the code on my phone. This just seems wrong. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> facing mode, so since you could have a front or back facing camera. We need the one that's facing the user. It should be called front to back, but it's not. <laughs> so if we like, take a look at get user media, it's basically a promise of a media stream. So what do we do with a promise? Let's take the stream we're getting from it. A good thing if I have something I type wrong here, I have Rob in volume, so I will fix it for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so remember we had our video element. Uh, let's see. We don't have autocomplete, but it should be called native. Source object. That's easy to remember. And let's add it to the string. Well, hey, I can't. Nothing. I just seeing black on my screen right now. This isn't working. Android, right? Or iPhone? This is an iPhone. I mean, I, I thought PWAs just work across you know, all yeah, devices. I have support it though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great forehead, we'll say. Okay, so autoplay. Okay. Now we can see me move at least. Yeah. Still see him. Still see him. And uh, I think Stack Overflow said something, said something about plays in line or something like that. Let's try plays in line. There we go. So now you can see it. It's working on. Front. It's that nice. To be able to have something that you can see the errors happening in real time. It's almost like someone built a feature just for this. <laughs> you should all go home and play with this tonight. 
I will, I will stay here all night if you want to play with me. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the camera. Uh, so what should you do next? I mean, well, this is amazing. I, you know, Instagram sold for a lot of money, and they just had like filters. So maybe filters? we could do that. We could try and sell this for a couple billion to Zuck or something. What do you think? Let's build a filter. Yeah, it sounds good to me. D does Zuck still have money left? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. So let's go in and somebody's looking too good tonight, so we're gonna blur him out a little bit. <laughs> So let's add a checkbox. That's fine. I'm seeing your errors on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we have blur here, so we need to do something with blur, right? Uh, could help to have a variable in blur. Let's start by setting it to false. We want to use this variable in the input box. So let's use the, the checked input. And we'll set it to blur. We also want to pay attention when we change this input. So we'll use the change event. And what we're going to do is set blur to be not blur. So basically, if blur is true, we're going to set it to false. I'm going to see an extra C on that check. Yep. Automatic spell check built in, too. By <laughs> <laughs> it's just standing over your shoulder at all times. <laughs> what are you going to step? <laughs> Short scalable. It worked. <laughs> okay, so you set a filter. Filter, filter, filter. So inside of it, your element, it means we need, gonna need to style this somehow. And how do we style something, everyone? So I create a new function, get styles. Let's go in and implement this one. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so let's start out with having the filter empty, and we're going to return the filter. And then we need some magic inside of here. So if so, we're going to check the blur variable, and if it's true. We'll set the filter to, and the magic word is blur to it. And you can make, uh, change how blurry you want something to be. So, and that input is pixels. Ooh, very Try fancy. Try it out. <laughs> very fancy. I think we're at like a quarter of a billion. We need a couple quarter of a billion. Couple, couple more filters to get to a billion. Okay. <laughs> Let's do. We'll speed this next part up. Yeah, feel free to just copy pasta. Yeah. I'll copy in the next filter well if you want to mention it. Oh, the, what, would, what would you like me to mention? <laughs> Anything? Who's going to win the lottery tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, yeah, this is live on stackblitz.com. You can use it. So any project you create, if you're signed in, that is, um, you can be able to do this sort of thing. Um, and as, as uh, that kind sir noted, uh, this does run the same stuff that VS Code does. You get IntelliSense, it automatically pulls in your type definitions uh, from NPM packages and your own code. So it'll automatically complete. Um, we're going to have auto import at it pretty soon, so you'll be able to just right click and have the variable pop in or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs>
Yeah. And you can play that uh, my favorite is meter. <laughs> I like it too. It helps me adjust my hair because it's But you know, in my case it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I try and just like, wow, no difference. Oh, there it is. Woo! Look at all those filters. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you, you guys added on to You added flip. <laughs> that wasn't even part of our original demo. <laughs> Bonus points. That is, that, is, that is a really cool feature. He I was at 1.5 billion, so I think I have to beat that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no WhatsApp. That's like 17, though. <laughs> cool. Okay. So let's give something away. We have two gifts tonight. Few. Let's start with two from here. Which, Which one, one do you want to start with? Which one? The plastic bag. I'm going to let Eric pick a random. Oh, oh, we're, oh we're doing this. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Right. yes. OK. <laughs> the best part. This yes. is the best way to give away a prize. Let's do this last. OK. So if everyone who has their phone out, I'm going to select one of you. And I'm going to remotely execute code on your device to let you know that you won this thing. Okay? It's it's cool though. It's totally safe. All right. So let's see. Um, man, who's using Firefox? All right. That's me. That's me. <laughs> Is it actually? No. All right. Eric was you here. Won. All right. Is everybody, whoever wins this, raise your hand. Okay. Who won? Ellen? Oh, the Firefox user! Woo! All right. And you call? <laughs> Do I get to choose another one? Sure. Pick one. Okay. We have more gifts. Cool. All right. Let's have fun. Yeah, I feel like Santa Claus. Who wants socks? Uh, Angela socks. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's do. Who's got their. Oh, that might be us. Let's see, all right, Android browser 4.0. Wow, is that not even Chrome? All right, let's see, who's got this one? Okay. Who has it? No one? No one? Wait, somebody in Tacoma? <laughs> so is someone's on the live stream? Okay, well, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you're we are. on the live stream, sorry. <laughs> okay, let me try and get someone who's in Seattle. Okay, uh, Safari 11.0. All right, let's do this one. Let's see if we can make this work. <laughs> we have 26 people fighting for these socks right now. <laughs> okay, anyone get this one? Anyone Safari? Wow. Okay, I'm picking all the live stream people, I guess. <laughs> Okay, let me, let me try another one. Uh, Nobody wants the socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like, I... Uh, they um, are not used, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Let me try this one. Okay, Chrome, Android, anyone? Wow, I was... No one? <laughs> okay. Should we change oh, the beat? Wait. You should just wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Yes, we have a winner. Oh man, I was I was getting worried that we had a bug in our side of things. <laughs> like that many duds, I was like, ugh. Okay. So let's go to the final prize. The final prize. I, I think we everyone it will be from first try, right? Yep. Daydream view. Do do another one? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, boy, what do we go for here? Um, Looks like it's from Google. All right. Heard of it. You should know. make sure it's not an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last one goes to. Woo! All right, okay. we have our winner. Okay. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so, guys, Stack Blitz is amazing for prototyping. I think it's really good to use. It's, it's cool. 
Thank yeah. you, Eric. Well, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Where is that environment? This editing environment. Say what? Is it local environment or is it online environment? Uh, the editing thing. You are looking at a web browser right now. Oh, this entire thing browser? is a web browser. You can go to stackwith.com. This is all on stackwith.com. It is all running inside of your browser, though. So you can go offline, and everything will still, everything that does not require an internet connection, i.e., like installing npm packages, that will work just like it would work if you were local and tried installing something from npm. You're offline, um, but you can keep hot reloading, refresh the browser. You can even open it in a new browser tab, your preview, and keep updating. Because um, that's all running. We have a dev server running inside of the service worker. Um, that means the only requirement is browser. Yep, you should yep. bring a web browser. You can code on a Chromebook. By the end of the year, actually, by the end of the summer, you'll be able to commit back to GitHub. So you'll be able to actually just use this and build a, you know apps on Angular CLI. Um, and right. your code is going to save on GitHub. Yeah, yeah, you'll be able to commit back to GitHub. Yep. So you can use keep using GitHub as your source of truth for that. Uh, by the end of the year, you'll be able to do one-click deploys to Google Cloud and maybe other providers as well. And will this stay free? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we want to. We want to keep it free. Um, do you hardly care first? <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have a lot of companies are, if you scroll down the page, you can see there's a lot of companies that are sponsoring our work on this thing, and uh, we just want to stay alive. We're not trying to, you know, we're not trying to make a couple billion dollars off this thing or anything. Not yet, at least. So you um, can sell my code if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what about things like private repositories? Is there any plan to integrate those? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So like private GitHub repos. Yeah, that's this is that's gonna work. Uh, I think I think it's slated for July. Like our full. That's we're doing a full GitHub integration. Um, I think we're actually gonna be doing private NPM packages as well. So if you use that stuff, you'll be able to install that. Like pretty much like our goal by the end of the year is that we want you to be to be able to do everything that you would really need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis inside of Stackwitz. So like committing to GitHub, installing private NPM packages, publishing packages to NPM, um, deploying to production, like that whole workflow for at least a portion of people. We're not gonna be able to fit every use case, but at least some. Yeah. No, you cannot use them key bindings. That's also on my to-do list. Um, surprisingly hard to do, um, but yeah, that's it's something that we've we've heard that a lot. Um, it's it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. Any plans? Go ahead. <laughs> There's someone yell louder than the other. Uh, so, are, any plans on releasing the package manager, the smart clever thing? Yeah, yeah, it's out. Yeah, it's we, out. yeah, a lot of our, our, a lot of our stuff is open source. You know, the, the caveat is that bringing it to local is going to be difficult. Okay. Um, okay. Largely because it, it relies on having a lazy loaded file system, which uh, the file system that runs on Mac, Windows, etc. Very difficult to make lazy loadable. Um, NPM's actually using some of our stuff in a thing that they're working on that is going to come out at some point, so that might be a thing. Um, but uh, we we want to bring this technology to local, and it's it's probably going to be like maybe a year before we can really do it. Um, but it's it's going to be yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting solution if we can actually do it. But um, the the source code's out there. Uh, people are starting to hack away on it, kind of use it in different ways, but. And is IDE accessible? Uh, not yet. So that's like by the end of the year, we we want to have like pretty much all of this stuff. Like we want to have feature parity with your local um, editor extensibility is part of that. I, the, the 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 hard part about building this thing is that we kind of take a hard line stance on everything has to run in the browser. Like there's a lot of you know Cloud Nine. Uh, I don't know, there's like glitch.com, which is a super great product. Uh, all of these rely on a server, which uh, costs money but uh, for them to run at least, but it also leads to kind of a poorer experience because one, you have to deal with latency between you and that VM that you're like typing code into that's being, you know, being sent over the wire. Uh, but the other part is usually the VM is smaller than the machine you're using to connect to it, right? So our philosophy is we want to leverage the full compute power of your local machine, but what that means is that a lot of stuff that is built, you know, that will run on your local machine won't work in Stackwoods. So, for example, like the syntax highlighting you're seeing here in VS Code, that actually uses a C library, like which doesn't work in a browser. So we had to write our own syntax highlighter to make this work, right? Like stuff like that. It's just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like I have to write a syntax highlighter? Like, um, but we have to do that. That's what it takes to, to port a lot of this stuff to the web. Um, 
But so long story short, yeah, we're gonna we're totally gonna be able to extend it. Um, but it's just like we have to figure out how to how to do that in a sane way. So. Stacklets um, IO is the same or mirrored from stacklets.com? Uh, yeah, so stacklets.com is like the our primary domain. .io is for all of the applications. So it's kind of like GitHub. Uh, you know, GitHub.com is where you're looking at your repos. Uh, GitHub.io is what they use for GitHub pages, right? So it's kind of similar to here, like all Stacklets projects are on .io. So the browsers you saw up there were logged into com, not into .io. Uh, well, everyone who was connecting was going to .io. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's connecting, well, it's, sorry, I, I should say, they open .io, but it's, yeah, it's interfacing with the dot I didn't see my browser there, but that's why I'm asking. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. What, what, what kind of browser? browser that most people use. What, what kind of browser do you have? It's called Adblock. That, they have a browser? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't know that. We're sniffing the user agent, so it might be showing up as <laughs> Firefox or I don't know. <laughs> that's what a lot of these usually do, that sort of thing. So. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What's next? I know that Rob didn't.